Like, are there some utilities that you are just n notoriously infamous and not infamous, but they're, they're known for basically not giving Absolutely. good oh, net yeah, meter? Absolutely. 100%. So, like, which, which utility, like, if you're going solar, if you want to go solar and you're in one of these utilities, mm -hmm. basically, we're going to have to figure out an alternative to help you save a lot more money when you go solar. So Yeah, and there's so many. I mean, I think there at this point there's 60 plus, you know, resellers, but you know, there's um, the good ones, for example. And and now here's take this with a grain of salt because the, people will sometimes put negative remarks on on these companies not knowing perfectly well that it's not them, it's Encore that owns the grid. Like, for example, if you had your power go out in a particular area five times last year and you get online and say, this electrical company stinks because my power went out five times last year, it wasn't their fault, it was Encore. Encore owns the grid, they're just the ones doing the billing. So to be fair, sometimes if you see negative remarks on the actual electric company, 90% of the time it wasn't them. So just to say that, you know, up front, but there's you know, like Ampra Energy. We actually have a relationship specific with Ampra where we do a true one-to-one -one credit. It's specific to us. Um, what do you mean specific to you? To well, so my company that, uh, that, that I'm a part of has made an arrangement with Ampra Energy. So they will give our customers a specific deal that they do not give to other people. So wow. that's kind of one of those ace in the hole sort of, sorts of things where if, if, if you can offer that one more better step of service and help someone get into the proper utility wow. and you've already got the pricing and, and, and the warranties, they're, they're normally going to choose you know, you know, our option. But having said that, there's uh, TXU, Reliant, there's Rhythm, there's one called Octopus Electric. I don't know who figured out the name of that company, but they're pretty <laughs> good, to tell you the truth. They got a lot of, a lot of great re uh, reviews. Um, there's some that are not good. Just Energy is horrible. Constellation is horrible. Um, they're not horrible companies, but just for solar, their program is horrible. So therefore, if we run into that situation, then we say, yeah, we've got to get you to somewhere else, you know, clearly. Here's the thing that we do a little bit different that not everybody does, and I don't know if you run into this where you're at, but what happens is when these people make these decisions to go with a certain company, they lock you into these contracts. Mm -hmm. And if you don't look at the fine print, you can get yourself in a lot of trouble, right? <laughs> but then if you try to get out of it, they'll turn around and say, oh, you want to leave? Oh, it's going to be $600 cancellation fee. Well, there's a lot of customers out there that don't want to absorb that. They're not going to feel like that's... It might even be a deterrent to say, well, you know what? Maybe let's just not even look just into stick this with it. right now. We'll just, we'll just move on. Yeah. We'll pay someone's way out of that, and we won't charge it to the customer because we feel like it's the right thing to do, first of all, but also it's the cost of doing business sometimes to make sure that somebody is going to be utilizing that system the best way possible. If they're going to go ahead and trust us with the system, then we're all, we don't love doing it, but, but we'll pay your way out of it to get you to where you're going to get the full use of, of the system. Um, there, here's the flip side of, of the unregulated. Then you have co-ops. Like where I live, I live in Pertinalis. Pertinalis pissed off a whole lot of people this last year because they lowered their solar credit. Even people that had had bought solar years ago, they just dinged it down. Was there not like a grandfather in the No, not at all. Now, to their, to their credit, this recently, they upped it again. So they kind of, they realized, uh oh, that was not the best thing to do. But there's other utilities like the city of Austin that gives you a set rate versus a net metering. They'll give you 9.7 cents across the board. Doesn't matter how many you create. And, and, and just to give an idea of what, what is the price per kilowatt hour in Austin? Um, so on it, 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 here's the tough part. It's a, tiered, it's a tiered system. So in Austin Energy, there's a five tier system. So depending on how much you use, you could be at 12 and a half. I'm seeing about 13.4 on average across the board. So if you have yeah. to buy, so, you know, when we talk about these one-to-one -one mm -hmm. net metering, you know, deals, that means that they'd credit you exactly the same, like 13 cents back. But, but there's all, but, yeah. there, but there's, you know, there, it, it's not like a, if it's not one-to-one, -one, it, it's worthless. You know, it's, it's kind of like a ratio, right? So, I mean, if they're, if you're going to buy it for 13 and get nine back for it, that's 
it's not bad. I mean, it, yeah, it, but it could check be. out the but check out the flip side of this. Okay. And this is what we try to educate about, and that is this: if you are in the tier one, two, and three, you're not even getting to that nine point seven yet. So you're making money by staying in that first three tiers. So if you get into someone's home and you look at their bill and you, you see what their math is in terms of what their kilowatt hour usage is, and it turns out that they're only staying in those three tiers, then putting solar in is actually gonna be a profitable venture. At that point, they're basically going into business to sell electricity back to Austin Energy. Now, granted, they won't let us do more than like 120%. So there's a limit. Yeah, like you can't just okay. put anything you want on the home. But, but you're getting like a positive, like, exactly, like even better than one-to-one. -one exactly, that meter at that it. point, you're more than one-to-one. -one. It's pretty amazing. Yeah, and they're not, um, at least from my understanding, we're not in any kind of danger of losing that. Normally, there's talk in the industry if someone's gonna change those policies. Yeah. We're hearing nothing, and there's a, some rebates in Austin Energy that uh, that are really attractive uh, as well. Normally, yeah. net metering incentives go down when a certain percentage of the population has solar. It does. And now they're right. kind of dealing with like all this excess energy coming onto the grid in the day. Yep. Like in California, that's that, that's why they passed this whole net metering 3.0, where they said, "Hey, you got to get batteries, so you don't just push all of your power to the grid in the day because we don't want to deal with it." Yep. Um, so. Do, do you have any idea what the uh, the market penetration is and you know for solar for solar in Texas in, yeah in general like about what percentage of households uh, you know I, I can't say a hundred percent but I do know that this this was a figure that I looked at not too long ago on an average Austin and surrounding areas based on how many permits are being drawn we're in not just us but other contractors we're installing upwards of two thousand you know systems a month in the area so like there's a huge influx a lot. Of, of solar when, what people don't always grasp too is that if if this continues the way it, it looks like it's going to in five years from now if you don't have solar on your house you're going to be the outcast you're going to be the one if it goes to sell the house and people are like well, why would we buy your house whenever there's 10 other ones over here they all have solar panels and they're and, probably going to want a discount and they're, yeah, exactly they're gonna think, well i got to move in and then spend 30 grand or 40 grand. Yeah, you don't have that. So I'm gonna offer you $30,000 less for your house than these other ones. So we're yeah. seeing a really good stabilization for resale. Um, my, and, and actually in, in Austin and most of Encore, like if you buy it right through someone who doesn't give you one of these crazy buy down loans, um, your resale value, even after you get your tax credit and maybe pay on it for a couple of years is about a wash. You don't even get that usually with a car that you purchase. You're usually upside down in that car for most of your loan. Well, I, the reason yeah. I the reason why that is, in my opinion, is because you know a car has maybe a, a ten year lifespan on average. Right. A right. solar system it comes with basically a twenty five. I mean the panels and the inverters. I mean if you have good inverters, not not a centralized string not, inverter. Not string inverters. Yeah. I mean. They have their place in certain yeah. circumstances, but you know, for the most part, if you have an end-phase microinverting system, it's going to have a 25-year warranty. Exactly. And so the depreciation curve is really slow. I mean, if you move five years later, your system's still worth 80 percent. Absolutely. 100%. And if you're and if you already got your 30 percent tax credit back, that means five years later, like you're still in the green. Yeah, for sure. 